what's up guys so i sent the code to this game and i've seen like jeff and alex and them play it so i decided to go ahead and give it a whirl today get on through the academy before we progress our way perhaps through this game depending on how cheesy it is so first let's go into the settings graphically everything pretty much speaks for itself if you go down this is pretty much what i will keep it set at right here i will tell you full screen borderless window or whatever that's when you boot it up how it uh the resolution that will come in on your screen audio so the music got cut down for obvious reasons no copyright and then the dialogue i don't know i'll keep it around here i don't know how annoying this guy is going to be right gameplay i will tell you now i watched jeff on it watched northern alex on it so i kind of know what the settings should be set at toggle quench input you want that unchecked and that way when you're putting water out of the hose you don't gotta have whatever you got your key set at you don't have to continuously have it pushed down so you definitely from the set want to have that unchecked quench indicator and the quench indicator with numbers i have that both checked and you'll see why while we run through the academy once i get out of the academy i have all the 100 percent plans to turn this off but this will sort of show you how it is to actually extinguish the fire hook and then obviously i have my uh crosshairs disabled if you guys you know track me for a while you know that i can't stand having that like when you're a hip or having that little dot in your screen it just uh i don't know it annoys me sometimes and really i think it's only because that it takes a little immersion from the game so keyboard and mouse obviously still you know all pretty much just self-explanatory hadn't really changed anything up i've changed a little up on my xbox controller that's what i use but you can obviously use a ps4 or a pc gamepad yeah i'll just let you take take a look now i do know on the ladder truck operations like some of these you just cannot change right and then the steering wheel obviously if you have a steering wheel like uh northern alex and you know you can go ahead and mess with that I use a combo, the combo mambo. Uh, sometimes I'll use the gamepad, sometimes I'll use keyboard and mouse, or sometimes I will use both. So that's that. If you make any changes, always remember to apply the changes here. So then obviously you'll boot up and select the academy training facility. Okay, so here's the training academy. It's really weird. I feel like I can uh, left mouse and look around like Arma, but you can't. So we'll start with dealing with doors and walls and we'll work it on down. I pretty much will not try to interrupt the commentator. So let's get it. Training exercise will get you familiar with using forcible entry tools on doors and walls. Walk forward and open the door. Okay guys, so uh, lower left, that's gonna be the keyboard. And depending on what I'm using, it might show the gamepad settings. And open the Another door. thing you don't want to do is go too fast through this, or the sound might glitch out for you. The next door is locked. Grab the crowbar off the bench and walk towards the door. Try to then go with his instructions, no matter how fast you can uh, get through it. I've noticed when I get through it, when I try to get through it really quickly. Good work. Now place the crowbar on the ground in the glowing box. That the sound sometimes uh, will glitch out. So obviously we we'll trigger. Nicely done. R E. Place the Halligan tool on the ground in the box. Grab the demo hog off the bench, walk towards the door, and bust it open. Grab the axe and walk towards the door. Swing at it and smash it open. Yeah. When there's no available door, create your own. You can break through some walls using any forcible entry tool. Look for the cracks in the wall and break through it with your axe. Examine the wall for cracks and break through with your axe.
Good work. Now place the axe on the ground in the glowing box and we'll move on. This training will familiarize you with using forcible entry tools on Windows to enter and exit rooms and buildings. Now, grab either tool on the bench, walk over to the window, and smash it open. Okay, now climb through the window into the next area. At times, the window is too high to reach, so you'll need to climb onto something to gain access. Get on top of the wood pile and smash open the window. Job done. Now climb through the window into the next area. Good. We're almost done. Smash either window and climb through to the next area. This exercise will familiarize you with using power saws to cut through locks to open doors and vents. Okay, pick up the circular saw from the ground. So B is for your flashlight? Or your headlamp, should I say? on the vent ahead. You have to be... Nice. And then to Once actually more, run... Pick up the saw from the ground. So it's gonna be shift or it's gonna be uh, depress left thumbstick, so L3. Now, walk over to the garage and use the saw to cut the locks on the door. Cut both locks to open the door. Job complete. This training exercise will familiarize you with using ladders. To use a ladder, you must first attach to it. Walk over to the indicated spot and connect yourself to the ladder. So again, R3, we're changing views. RC by default on the keypad. Walk over to- Also, when you go to the ladders, make sure you step off a little okay. bit. Now reconnect yourself to the ladder, climb back down to the ground. It's not like Ghost Recon, where you get right up on it, right? You gotta give it a little space. It's a little glitchy, but okay. not too bad. Now, climb up to the window. Good! Now climb through the window. Okay, now climb back down and we'll continue. Okay, now climb back down and we'll continue. Job done. With this training exercise, we'll familiarize you with how quickly fire can spread. Okay, stay where you are and just watch the fire spread. Notice how fast it jumps object to object. Okay guys, right here, before we go back into the fire, this is why I keep the... in the gameplay settings, this for right now is why I keep the quench indicator and the quench indicator with numbers. I keep those checked off or ticked, right? 
So this will explain why. And don't forget toggle quench input. You want to leave that unchecked, unchecked. So that way, when we pull down the turn, water the nozzle on, it will. We won't have to hold it. You know, hold it down or depress the fucking button. Right? Spray water. So as you see there, I like to have the numbers on because that that kind of tells you like how how tender it is or the hot spot. The higher the number, you know, the more time that it's going to take, or more uh, agua it will take to finish it off. Uh, pretty well with your mouse. To keep it so. Spray water. All right. Once again, just watch the fire spread. So obviously it won't let me go past that line right there yet. I was trying to get burned. Good work. Now grab a hose and try to put out both grease fires. So obviously you can't put grease fires out with uh, water yet. Now. Grab a hose and try to put out both grease fires. Water doesn't help, does it? In fact, it makes it worse. Water and grease fires don't fit. To fight grease and chemical fires, only a hundred and forty CO2 extinguisher. Grab an extinguisher and paint it at the base of both fires. Sweep the extinguisher side to side on the plane to make sure you put it out. Grab an extinguisher and aim it at the base of both fires. Sweep the extinguisher side to side on the plane and make sure you put it out. Good work. When out on calls, look for different types of flames so you can be ready for any grease or chemical fires you run into. This exercise will get you up to speed on smoke how it affects your vision, and how to effectively clear it. Smoke is dangerous and can seriously harm you, which is why you'll always be equipped with an SCBA system to ensure you can breathe in any situation. When going into a smoke-filled area, be sure to use your helmet-mounted flashlight. It'll really make a difference. Turn it on now before entering the building. Smoke rises. Getting below the neutral plane of the smoke keeps you in cooler air and improves your vision of the area. Stay below the smoke level by crouching. The best way to deal with smoke is to eliminate it. Venting a room allows the smoke to clear and makes it easier for you to see any dangers. This will really help when doing search and rescue operations. To clear the smoke, walk over to a window and open it. Good. With only a single window open, it'll take some time for the smoke to clear. To speed up the process, open all the windows in this room.
Now, open the door and enter the next area. It's full of smoke. Stay crouched so you have the maximum amount of The drill. Stay low and open all the windows to clear the smoke. Now, open the door and enter the next area. Okay, we're going to take a different approach for this room. A smashed window is just as effective as an open window. If you need to vent smoke but run into a locked window, don't let that stop you. Grab a tool off the bench and smash both windows. Nice work. The smoke will clear out in no time. In this next phase, we'll take a slightly different approach. If you still have the forcible entry tool, use it to smash open one or both of the windows. If you don't have a tool, grab one off the bench. Good. Now enter the building. Now, open the door and enter the next room. Okay, you know the drill. Stay low and open the window to clear the smoke. You did it. Now we're going to learn about one of the most dangerous situations you'll ever encounter, a backdraft. Backdrafts often surprise even experienced firefighters. Backdrafts occur when the oxygen within a room has been used up, and then more oxygen is rapidly reintroduced into the area. This is caused by opening a door or window in an oxygen depleted environment. When backdrafts occur, fire explodes out of the door or window and can become a fast moving fireball, causing damage to anything in its path and can even badly injure you. Okay, enough talk. Now we're going to show you a backdraft event so that you know what to look for in a potential backdraft situation. First, walk over to the window on the left and look into it. You'll notice that the room is full of smoke, but there are no visible signs of flames. This indicates that the room is above its upper flammability limit. This means that the gas or vapor in the air is capable of producing a flash fire. It just needs an ignition source. Oxygen. Okay, look at the locked door on the left. Notice that the door is different than other doors and has signs of a potential backdrop. In addition to the room being full of smoke with no visible flames, there's also smoke at the base of a door along with a pulsing sound. Do you hear it? It's a low thud. This sound seems like it's repeating because the room's trying to suck air into it. It needs oxygen to reignite the fires within. Okay, the door's unlocked. Open the door, but immediately back away from it to avoid the blast from the back. opposite the door was caught in the fireball and is now on fire. Put out the flames in this room, then move through the door into the next room and extinguish the fires there. Put out the fires in this room, then go through the door and into the next room and extinguish the fires there. then go through the door and into the next room to extinguish the fires there. Good work. Now notice that the next locked door has signs of a potential backdraft. 
Alright boys, we're gonna stay in front of it this time. Do you hear the pulsing sound? <laughs> okay. The door's been unlocked. Like last time, open the door, but remember to immediately back away from it to avoid the backtrack. Let's go! there. Good work. As I said before, even experienced firefighters can be surprised by backdraft. So pay attention to any closed door that you approach those, and look boys. for signs of backdraft. It could you save your life. Academy as well. This training exercise will familiarize you with setting up attack hoses to fight fires and show you how to connect a fire truck to a hydrant water supply. First, we'll establish a water supply line. This ensures you never run out of water when fighting fires. Now, walk over to the indicated compartment on the truck and grab a supply hose. The supply hose is the yellow one. Okay, now, look directly at the connector on the truck. You'll notice that you first need to remove the cap from the connector. So go ahead and remove the cap. Good. Now. Look directly at the connector on the truck and connect the hose coupler to it. Nice job. Walk over to the indicated fire hydrant. Good. Just like the connector on the truck, look directly at the connector on the fire hydrant and remove the... Head over to the indicated connector on the other side of the truck and connect the supply line to it. Like before, remove the cap, unroll the hose, and attach the hose coupler to the truck. Good. Just like before, Grab the coupler on the ground and walk over to the indicated fire hydrant and connect it to the hose. Remember to remove the cap before attaching the supply line to the hydrant. Okay, now we're going to attach an attack hose to the truck. Attack lines are colored red to indicate they're different from supply lines. Now, go to the back of the truck and grab an attack line. You can also grab one from any of the truck side compartments. Good. Now walk over to the indicated part of the truck where you can... Nice. We're going to need a nozzle for the attack line. The nozzle allows you to increase or stop the flow of water as needed. Now, pick up the coupler from the ground and walk to the back of the truck. Open the lower compartment and swap the hose coupler with a nozzle. Now that you have a nozzle, look directly at the coupler on the ground and attach it to your nozzle.
Fire's out. Job done. With this training exercise, you'll give commands to your squad mates. This will allow others to complete tasks for you while you focus on other objectives. Have a look at the upper right corner of your screen. You can see the AI indicator along with the associated shortcut. Point at the circle on the ground and press the shortcut for the AI that you've just seen in the upper right corner. The AI character will now walk to the indicated location. Good. Now direct the AI to the second circle, followed by the third. Well done. You've just learned how to give go-to commands. Now call the AI to your position. To give the command, hold down the AI shortcut key until the status icon in the upper corner changes to the follow symbol. The AI will now follow you. Walk along the waypoints. As you can see, the AI is following you in close proximity as you move around. As you can tell, the AI is very closely following your movements. Go ahead and instruct the AI to wait. Hold down the AI shortcut key on two victims need help in that building. Your mission? Rescue them. Head through the door and into the building. The door's locked. Instruct your AI to equip a Halligan tool and come to your location. Yes, sir. All right, you can instruct the AI to open the door for you. AI can interact with all context-sensitive objects like doors, windows, victims, and many others. Your crosshair will change when you aim at objects your AI squadmate can interact with. Press the AI shortcut key while aiming. Now, follow the indicated on screen interact. The AI squadmate can grab a hose and start combating the fire. Door is open, boss! fires are extinguished. Don't forget to get both victims to the paramedics. Use the AI shortcut again while aiming at the victim. While the AI is bringing the victim to safety, they're no longer available for other commands because their main priority is getting the victim to the paramedics. Go ahead and carry the other victim to the paramedics yourself to finish this training mission. Yes, sir. Victim safe, boss. Yes, Commander. Yes, sir. This training exercise will familiarize you with how to use ladder trucks and aerial arms to attack fires from above and to rescue victims in elevated locations. Before extending the truck's ladder, we must first stabilize it and ensure that the truck will not tip over with the ladder boom extended. Walk over to the indicated control panels and extend all the truck's outrigger arms. While deployed, the outrigger arms simultaneously bypass the movable suspension and... Good. The ladder arm offers you three degrees of movement. Up, down, left, right, and forward, backward. Extending the ladder arm forward and... All right, now, 
use the indicated controls and move the ladder in the forward and backward direction, making the ladder length longer and shorter. Excellent. Now, you're going to use the ladder arm and bucket to rescue some victims. Use the ladder arm controls and move the ladder bucket to either indicated area. Wait for the victim to walk to the bucket. You're essentially using the ladder bucket to give them an escape route. So once the victim has reached the bucket, they've moved into the safe zone and are considered safe. There we go. Conscious victims will not move towards the bucket. You must place the bucket near the victim, exit the bucket, and interact with the victim to get them to follow you into the bucket. When the bucket has reached the indicated area and the bucket is stable on the roof, the player can exit the bucket by pressing the use. Okay, you've saved one victim. Now position the bucket near the other indicated roof and wait for the victim to reach the bucket. This victim is unconscious, so you'll have to carry them back to the bucket. So I find it really unusual, though, that there's, like, no crane sounds or anything. So, like I said, I guess if you get ahead of this, or I don't really understand what goes on with the audio sometimes in the academy. So, just be forewarned, the sounds just might quit on you completely. I'm not sure if there's a crane sound or, you know, anything with this apparatus here. So basically we gotta go fight these fires using the bucket, is what it was telling us. So again, I'm not real sure if this audio glitch is inside the game or not, because I haven't gone on a mission yet, but uh, it gets kind of annoying. So I don't know if they can do something about that. Again, I'm sure a patch is gonna be in the works. It's kind of fun though, to be quite honest with you, I can't wait to go on a mission. I'm going to go ahead and give you my final thoughts and then we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, one, I really can't wait to get on a mission. This game is like really addictive in like a OCD type of way, right? Uh, I do believe there's a couple of improvements they could do. One is the time that it actually takes to extinguish the fires once you hit the hose to it. Now I get that that's the principle of this game, it's firefighting, HOA firefighter simulation. However, I also feel that once you put the water to it, there should be some type of option to, to the speed it takes to put out said fire. I also wish this was more of a sandbox game to be honest. Now I haven't been on a mission, however I have done my research, right? And I want to thank Notrato for giving me the code to said game in order to check it out again can't wait to go on the mission but again i hope these audio little issues clear up once you're on a mission i hope it's just something you know that's happening during the academy with that being said though again i find this game rather interesting however i really don't know what the playability is going to be like uh, so with that being said i hope you enjoyed the video today even if you're not going to buy it i hope that this might have helped you make up your mind whether you want to go ahead and make this purchase i believe it's about 30 bucks in the steam store and i don't believe it'll be on sale anytime soon as it really just came out and hit the market uh, remember we train today to be safe tomorrow I'll go ahead, I'll see you next video. Go ahead, snipe like, snipe sub, goose. That's how we roll.